important time for Dixon because of the primaries and uh, I think there are many people that are still undecided in our state. Uh, there's uh, unfortunately been such a contentious uh, primary that uh, I think people want to hear from the horse's mouth, so to speak. For a town like Dixon to have this, I think it's very nice, especially here, you know, in the uh, footsteps of Ronald Reagan. We decided to come out today to uh, see Rick Santorum and bring our kids. That's the main reason why we brought them. We thought, you know, good, good historical uh, event for them to see firsthand. I'm hoping to hear something that uh, you don't normally hear when you see the just the sound bites and the clips on TV. Something that's going to convince me that. You know, he's, he's different than what we currently have and what we've had in the past. This man is a man of principles. He's a man who has stood when it wasn't easy, and he will continue to stand in Washington, D.C. Well, I don't know if you noticed it, but my good Republican friends, when they place this statue, they've got Reagan looking right straight at the Democratic Party, trying to keep an eye on things. <laughs> We are really honored to have you here today. We really are. We're very pleased to have you here. We want to give you a big warm welcome to the city of Dixon. When you capture our party's nomination and you're looking around for a vice president, you know, Dixon, Illinois is not a bad place to look. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pr privilege to honor and honor to endorse and introduce to you the man I believe will be the next president of the United States, yes. Senator yes. Rick Santorum. Uh, it is uh, what an honor it is to be here, uh, just to um, to stand in front of this statue and in this town that did so much for this country, because this town helped shape and mold Ronald Wilson Reagan, and Ronald Wilson Reagan changed the world. So Dixon, Illinois, had a big role in changing the world as we know. It. And that's really the greatness of our country, is the idea that people can come from small town America many cases, and look in my case, a first-generation American, and have the opportunity because you were someone who were taught the principles of hard work and, and honesty and integrity and doing what's right even when it's hard. We have Barack Obama in four years of weakening America in an area that I know would disturb the President, President Reagan as much as any. Ronald Reagan would never apologize for the greatest country in the history of the world. We will build the strongest military on the face of the earth, and I will not cut defense spending. We will have a strong and powerful and forceful America. Ladies and gentlemen, that was one of the legs of the three stools, three-legged stool of President Reagan. Strong national security. Oh, there is an evil in this world. It resides in the hearts of radical Islamists who want to destroy freedom-loving institutions. One of the most vaunted legs of the stool that President Reagan talked about was he talked about the importance of limited government and free people. Because we didn't have all these government programs to take care of people. It was our responsibility as brothers and sisters in a community to to look out for each other. Still is. Yeah. In a small town America, as this man just said, it still <laughs> is. Remind us how important it was to allow the businessman, the entrepreneur, to, to make a profit and not condemn them as being rich or greedy or the 1%. Mm. The 1% does a lot of hiring of the other 99%, yeah. and that's a good thing. <laughs> Margaret Thatcher, after she left the Prime Ministership of England, looked back and what she had accomplished in, in England at the same time that she served as Reagan did. And she said she never was able to accomplish what Reagan accomplished in America. And she said the reason? The British national health care system. She said once government has their hooks into you, once government makes you dependent upon it for your very health and your lives and that of your children and your loved ones, they got you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They got you. Of course, Reagan understood that that foundational building block of society was the family. Marriage and the family are at the core and foundation of our society. As we hold these truths to be self-evident, truths, here's that 
word again. We hold these truths to be self-evident, apparent to all people of faith, people of no faith. That all men are created equal. Is that true in other civilizations around the world? No. Is it true in the Muslim world? Is it true in the third world? Of course not. For those who clamor for equality, understand where that concept comes from. It comes from Western civilization. It comes from the roots of our country, which our founders went on and, explained, and, and laid out in the next phrase. That they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights. That our rights do not come from the government. The concept of equality does not come from the government. The concept of truth does not come from the government. It comes from our Creator. We were an agrarian society for 2,000 years up until 1776. And in 230 years, because of America, because of you, free people, life expectancy has doubled. We've gone through an industrial revolution, a technology revolution. Imagine what the world would be like today if we were still having kings and emperors and dictators manage society for their benefit. You help us here in the next 24 hours. If you go out and you're willing to vote for me tomorrow, we're up against being outspent, depending on the press reporter who talked to me here today, either 5, 7, or 10 to 1. Mm -hmm. Robocalls, radio ads, television ads, all tearing down, tearing down. No vision, no hope, no promise of what America's to be. We must do better than that. Yes. 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 Yes.